What is up, budget builders? My name is Trill, and boy, do we have some shocking news to tell you. This time, it's regarding former President Donald Trump. He was speaking at a rally over the weekend, and he offered a proposal for the individuals that were charged during the January 6th attack on Capitol Hill. He even went a step further the next day, putting out a threat if prosecutors did anything to him as a result of the investigation into his personal business. Well, his homeboy, Lizzie Graham, was not happy about what Trump said and he called him out on it. But these two warning messages from Trump tells us exactly what we have to look forward to in the near future. We also have some rent prices going up as a result of the inflation. Are Americans going to be able to afford this in the future? Or is it going to cause more people to fall below the poverty level? Now guys, hey, if you're interested in any of these particular topics today and you wanna be a part of this channel, be so kind and go ahead and subscribe to it. It's totally free. And if you end up liking today's video, then go ahead and hit that like button for us. It really helps out this channel. Now let's go ahead and jump into the video. Real quick guys, hey, I wanted to ask you for your support on my new YouTube channel that we'll be launching sometime this month and it's called Budget Bill Finance. Now I'm trying to get 1,000 subscribers guys, so help a brother out, okay? I'm going to be talking about on this channel about how to grow your wealth, how to invest in stocks, as well as how to invest in real estate. And I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what I'm doing outside of YouTube. So if you wanna be a part of that channel, be so kind to go ahead and subscribe to it. Now that link will be down below in the description. The United States is now approaching more than 900,000 COVID-19 deaths. Yes, the U.S. is just days away from seeing 900,000 deaths that are related to COVID-19, as well as a million deaths are on the horizon. As of late Sunday afternoon, 884,223 people in this country have died from COVID-19, according to the John Hopkins University's data. Now, the death tolls during the current COVID-19 surge, fueled by Omicron variant of the novel coronavirus are surpassing the average daily tolls from a few months ago when the Delta variant was dominating the pandemic. And then as far as deaths in a single day, hey, here in the U.S., we have recently topped around 2,100 deaths in a single day, which is the highest in nearly a year, the Wall Street Journal reported on Sunday. And two months ago, before Omicron was detected, the seven-day average for newly reported deaths was around 1,000, less than 2,100 previously from last Monday. But this Omicron variant is still surging, although we are definitely happy that the Omicron is not as severe as the Delta variant that we have seen previously. But we also talked about recently that this new sub-variant of the coronavirus, which is the sub-variant of the Omicron variant, we have seen that being detected in New York as well as other cities around the country. But we don't know or have any data in regards to that new variant just yet. But I'm sure we will hear something soon coming this week. And also related to the coronavirus, hey, in regards to getting your vaccination as well as your booster shots, hey, we have this story right here where two Long Island nurses have made more than one and a half million dollars in selling fake vaccine cards. Yes, this particular scheme was stated by some prosecutors and these particular nurses sold fake vaccination cards as well as entered false information into New York's immunization database. Boy, this is really getting heated right now. Yes, these two nurses on Long Island are accused of collecting more than one and a half million dollars for selling forged COVID-19 vaccination cards, according to the Suffolk County District's Attorney Office. Now, these particular nurses, Julia, as well as Marissa, sold fake vaccination cards and entered false information into New York's immunization database, according to the prosecutors, and they charged $220 for these particular forged cards for adults and $85 for children. Wow, this is a complete scam going on. And I'm sure New York is not the only place that this is going on in. But these particular two individuals who are 49 and 44 years old were arraigned on Friday and each charged with one count of second degree forgery. 
Now, prosecutors ended up seizing about $900,000 in cash and a ledger which suggested that they made around $1.5 million in this particular vaccination scheme. Now, this started in November and went on through January. But guys, hey, I hope this information sends a message to others who are considering gaming the system, that they will get caught and that they will enforce the law to the fullest extent. Now, I just wonder exactly how these vaccination cards that they sold, how they are going to hold up in court as well. Because if they've used these vaccination cards to get into businesses and things like that, but I wonder if these particular individuals that purchase these fake vaccination cards are going to have to suffer any ramifications for knowingly purchasing these fake vaccination cards. But anyways, guys, hey, let me know what you think about this particular vaccination scheme down below in the comment section. I'm curious to think what you think about this. Moving on, the governor of New Jersey, he is telling people now that, hey, look guys, American people, it is time that we go ahead and start learning how to live with COVID-19. And I must say, guys, I agree with him because we already know this thing is not going anywhere. We have just need to learn whether we are going to either wear our mask or we are going to suffer the consequences if we do get COVID-19 infection. So guys, what do you think about this? Do you think that he is right in which we need to start learning to live with this COVID-19 or are we still keeping hope alive on that we are going to get rid of this COVID-19 forever? But yes, the governor said, on Sunday that his state will need to learn how to live with this COVID-19 pandemic. He said that we're not going to manage this to zero. Yes, we have to learn how to live with this totally. He said that you got to preempt this clearly and we're now getting caught up as a country, noting that COVID-19 cases are coming down in New Jersey and New York, which were hit the hardest earlier by these waves of COVID-19, as well as these individual variants. But the Arkansas governor as well, Asa Hutchinson, she voiced a similar sentiment during a appearance on Meet the Press on Sunday. And she said that I do believe that we need to move on from the pandemic status and mode of operation to more endemic. She also said that I think that we need to move out out of the panic mode, I think we need to handle this and make sure that we continue with our normal lives. Noting that COVID-19 cases in Arkansas peaked last week. Now, the governor's remarks come after the White House said last week that roughly 60 million U.S. households had ordered free at-home COVID-19 tests from the Biden administration since the website used to order the tests actually launched. Meanwhile, Kaiser Family Foundation poll published last week found that 75% of Americans said that they were tired of the pandemic. So I agree that we need to look towards moving forward in our lives because we are now entering into this endemic mode and we no longer need to be in the panic mode. But that's just my agreeance with this particular article, but I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comment section. Hey guys, as a result of this pandemic, we are now seeing rents hitting all-time highs. And yes, according to this article, it says that these are some most expensive cities for renters. Now, these particular numbers right here down below in the green section are in reference to one bedroom units being rented out for January of 2022. And this is shocking, guys. I don't know about you, but if you live in New York City, I really feel bad for you guys out there because it says that New York City, for the rent of renting a one bedroom bedroom apartment or something like that equivalent is going to run you about $3,260. Now guys, if you live in New York, let me know down below in the comment section if you agree with these numbers. Let me know if it differs as well. But we see other cities like San Francisco is around $2,850 and then Miami is around $2,340 and then as low as Fort Lauderdale, Florida around $1,940. Now now for me, myself, I live in Dallas, Texas area, and I actually have a few rental properties, but my rental properties consider around three bedrooms, two baths. And right now, those particular rates are going for $1,900. And these are actual houses, guys, with two car garages as well as one car garage. Now, one of my rental properties, which is the low end, which has one car garage, which has three bedrooms and one bath, that is going for around $1,600 but my largest unit is going for around $2,000 
per month, which is less than this one bedroom place in New York City. I, I hate to say it, guys, but some of you out there, if you live in one of these states right here, you need to try to move down to Texas and holla at Budget Bill. Hey, and while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to my new YouTube channel, guys. That link is down below in the description. But anyways, guys, hey, if these rents continue to increase like this, guys, this is going to force a lot of Americans to fall back below the poverty level. But this is what we have to deal with, guys, because of this inflation in this country. It is rising at a rapid pace, as well as the Fed is planning on raising interest rates at least four to seven times sometime this year in 2022. So we could see these particular rental increases even go higher than this. But I don't know how people in New York or San Francisco or Boston are going to be able to afford this. It really makes it hard for a family of either two or four people. I mean, guys, this is ridiculous. But anyways, guys, hey, we need to talk about some stimulus update news, guys, because this is in regards to the former president, Donald Trump. And he is raising some concerns because he ended up speaking in Conroe, Texas over the weekend. And where he stated, he said that, hey, look, if he becomes president, he is going to raise pardons on those individuals that were charged in the January 6th attack on Capitol Hill. Guys, this is really crazy, guys, because I don't know if you agree with me, but those particular people that attacked Capitol Hill and actually broke into Capitol Hill, yes, unannounced, uninvited. They were not invited into the Capitol, but they broke in. So that is considered breaking into a federal building. And those individuals were charged with this. But former President Donald Trump said that if he becomes the president in 2024, he is going to potentially provide pardons to all of those individuals that were treated unfairly because of the break-in during the January 6th attack on Capitol Hill. Now, I don't know what you guys think about this, but if you are a Trump supporter, I really want to hear from you guys. Do you think that this is right for him to pardon those individuals that illegally broke into the Capitol? Or if you believe that this is actually necessary for him to raise these particular pardons on all of those individuals and also President Donald Trump said during this particular uh, rally in Texas, he said that those people were treated very unfairly, especially the person with the horns on his head and then the other people that stole things from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. Yes, Trump thinks that those individuals were treated very unfairly. But guys, hey, I want to know what you guys think about this. This is very crucial that we are seeing President Trump stating that he is willing to pardon those individuals. Now, I will say that there have been more than around 700 people that were charged in this particular attack on Capitol Hill. So I don't know if he's going to be able to pardon that many people. This is crazy, guys. But I will say one of his buddies, his homeboy, Lindsey Graham, he actually spoke about this on Sunday. Yes, Lindsey Graham says that Trump's call to pardon those January 6th rioters is very inappropriate. Yes, Lindsey Graham was on CBS's Face the Nation with the host Margaret Brennan, and he played a clip of Trump speaking this Saturday at the Texas rally. And Trump said, if I run and I win, we will treat those people with January 6th very fairly. We will treat them fairly, and it requires pardons. We will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly. Now, Lindsey Graham said that, no, I don't want to send any signal that it was OK to defile the Capitol, Graham said on Brendan's show when he was asked if he agreed with Trump's message. And Lindsey Graham also said that, hey, look, there are other groups with causes that may want to go down to the violent path that these people get pardoned. And I think it's very inappropriate. I don't want to do anything that would make this more likely in the future, Graham told Brennan and the Republican senator added that he didn't like it when Vice President Harris and her associates and the people that work for her, her staffers raised money to bail out the rioters who hit cops in the head with burned down stores after sometimes violent demonstrations in the summer of 2020. So he said that I don't want to do anything from raising bail to pardoning people who take the law into their own hands because it will make more violence more likely, he said, and I want to deter people who did what they did on January the 6th and those who did it. I hope that they go to jail and get the book thrown at them because they deserve it. 
So Trump's own homeboy, Lindsey Graham, who he plays golf with, is going against Trump and calling him out for his message that he is going to pardon those individuals from the January 6th attack on Capitol Hill. But let me know what you guys think about this, guys. This is really troublesome if he is willing to do this because, like I said, guys, I believe that those individuals did break the law. And I believe that the law needs to be upheld, like former President Trump said in his rallies when he was the president. He said that he was going to be the lawmaker and he was going to uphold the law at all costs. But guys, this is what he's saying. He is saying that those individuals that broke the law, he is willing to pardon them as if it was OK overall. But I want to know what you guys think about this. But moving on, that's not the only thing that former President Donald Trump said. He also called out, said that, look, if these guys that are investigating into the January 6th attack on Capitol Hill, hey, they're investigating him, Donald Trump, as well as those other people that were potentially involved in the attack as well. He says that, look, if they are going to investigate anything illegal in my personal business or my personal finances, he is going to call for the biggest protest we have ever seen in Washington, D.C. But this particular message right here is calling for another rally and a huge protest if those prosecutors are willing to go into his information illegally and find things that they could use to be able to prosecute the former president, Donald Trump. Guys, I mean, this is getting serious because if former president Donald Trump is going to run for president, then these are the types of things that we are going to have to deal with going forward. But as he stated that he is only concerned with things that are illegal as far as the information that they obtain on him, if they obtain that information illegally, then he is going to call for the biggest protest that we have ever seen in American history. Now, I will say I am a believer of the law and I believe that prosecutors are going to be unable to illegally get information on the former president, Donald Trump. But that is just my version of it. We don't know exactly what the prosecutors are going to be using in which they are going to obtain information against former president, Donald Trump. We already know that they are going after him very hard right now, as well as other people that are around him and his party, as well as his son, his daughter, and all of those individuals as well. So we do know that they are really trying to crack down on things that are related to the Trump administration. But I do not agree that they get information illegally against them. Now, I do believe that everyone should be held accountable for the action that they take in which they do in this country. And that is in regards to whether you're a president or whether you're an individual person like myself. I do not believe that anyone should be held above the law. However, I do not support the idea of obtaining information regarding him or anyone else illegally. So guys, we are just going to have to see how all of this plays out. We do know that this is going to be a long investigation and we do know that the former president Donald Trump is planning on running for the next presidency in 2024, but he refuses to announce whether he is going to run or not until after the 2022 midterm elections. But we are just going to have to see how all of this plays out in the near future. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. I'm curious to see exactly what your comments are. And I hope this information was helpful to you today. Anyways, guys, hey, that's all I have for you today. Now, if you enjoyed this type of content and you want to see more, hey, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like this video, then go ahead and hit that like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching. And I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.